Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to continue exploring the subject of three phase and in particular we're going to look at how to calculate the neutral current in an imbalanced three phase system. Now this is a subject that we've looked at in a couple of previous videos and I've shown a couple of ways that you can calculate what the neutral current will be when you know the current in L1, L2 and L3 of a three phase system. Now the method that I'm about to show you today is really good in a couple of ways and not so good in a couple of ways as well. Uh, it's really good because once you've got this set up and you've got the hang of it, it's really, really easy to use. And I'm going to put a link in the description below for you to be able to access my version of this so that you don't even need to build this if you don't want to. Um, and it gives you a really quick, easy answer. Uh, it also displays what's going on visually, which I really love. I think it's a really good way of uh, understanding what's happening uh, with waveforms. It's going to help you to develop your understanding of that. Uh, the downside is that this is not a method that you're going to be able to use in an exam, and that really is the only downside to this. However, what this is going to be really useful for is when you're practicing those calculations, whichever way you choose to do it to calculate the neutral current in a three-phase system, uh, the best way of doing that is to pick some random figures for your three phases for L1, L2 and L3, and then to work through the calculation and see what answer you get. Now, the problem with that is that you can never really be sure that you've got the right answer unless you're working through some preset questions that your teacher's given you. It's very difficult to check and see if you've got your answer right. This method is going to help you to check that answer. So this is going to be done using one of my favorite websites in the whole world, desmos.com. Uh, they pronounce it desmos. I think it's uh, American. Uh, I normally call it desmos, so I may call it either in this video, so please don't get angry either way. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to set up a three-phase neutral current calculator uh, on this piece of software here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to set the graph up to work for us. So if you want to just skip to kind of the end result of what I'm doing here to see how the graph is going to help you to confirm your calculations, then please feel free to skip ahead in the video. But if you want to understand what goes into setting this graph up, then please uh, continue uh, to watch here. Okay, so we're going to go to the settings, this little spanner here, uh, and we're going to have a look at how to set this page up. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to uh, change some values on the x-axis, and we're going to want to see what this waveform looks like across one uh, complete rotation. Uh, so what I'm going to do is set this here to just over 360 degrees, so we're setting that to 400, uh, so minus 10 at this end. Uh, 400 at this end and then the y-axis I'm going to set between minus 11 and 11. Uh, again you can change this to suit the numbers that you're going to be using uh, but this will work for that. If you're going to use currents that are above uh, 11 amps uh, then you might want to change these settings a little bit give bigger numbers here but you can see the principle of what's happened uh, it's just changed the kind of the limits of what we can see on the page here now this is really important we're going to change this to be shown in degrees so we don't want it in radians Radian, radians are a beautiful thing mathematically uh, they're kind of like the proper way of doing angles uh, but we're going to work in degrees for this video because it'll make life uh, a little bit easier to understand so we've got our graph set up now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create our three phase waveform. So the easiest way to do that is just to say in this case that uh, y is going to be equal to L1 we'll call it. Notice how it's put the one uh, in the subscript there which is super helpful. And we're going to say y equals L1 times by the sine of x. So we're going to put that in there. And it's given me the option here to add this slider which I'm going to do but I'm going to do that in a little minute because L1 is going to be super helpful as a slider. Uh, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put in another waveform here, uh, y equals, this time will be L2, and it's going to be sine of x again, but this time we need to change it up a little bit. And the way we're going to change it up is we need to offset this waveform from our first waveform. So I'm going to put uh, a little bracket after uh, the sign there and before the X and then I'm just going to put in here plus 120. Now that means that I'm whatever angle is going in here for X I'm adding 120 degrees on it and the effect of that as we'll see in a minute is that it offsets the waveform by 120 degrees. Now again we've got this option to add a slider for L2. We'll do that momentarily. Uh, next one Y equals L3 and once again we're going to put in the sign of open the brackets this time we're going to put in there x plus 
240. So that's 120 plus 120. And of course, if we add another 120 on there, we'll end up back where we started uh, here, where there's no number because 360 in electrical terms, in rotational terms, in terms of angles, uh, once you get through one full revolution, 360 degrees, you're back to where you started at zero degrees again. Okay, so we've got our uh, three waveforms programmed in here. Notice we've got this little exclamation mark, and that's because we've got this unknown uh, constant in here, L1. Uh, we're actually going to make it into a, a variable with our sliders. So we'll do that now. We'll volley our sliders in. So there we've got L1. There's our first slider, L2 and L3. Uh, now again, what I like to do is I like to move these around a little bit. I like to keep everything in its proper place. So uh, what we'll do is we'll move uh, the waveforms so that they're all together. So look at this. Again, this isn't necessary. It'll work perfectly without this, but it's just going to help us to understand what we're doing. Now notice here, L1 at the moment is set to a value of 1. Now a very important point on that. Here's our L1 waveform. Notice it's red. So here's our L1 waveform, and that is there. You see it's peaking with a value of 1. Notice that at 90 degrees it peaks at a value of 1. Uh, the other waveforms, if we look at them, notice our uh, L3 waveform here is peaking at uh, 210 degrees, it's peaking at 1, and our blue waveform L2 is peaking at uh, 330 degrees at 1 also. And that makes perfect sense because the three waveforms are peaking 120 degrees apart from each other. Okay, now we want to be able to adjust these waveforms and that's where these sliders come in that we've got here. So if I now move this, you can see as I increase the value of L1, so let's say I'm going to set L1 to 4, we could use that to represent 4 amps flowing through L1. Strictly speaking, the peak value is not for the, we wouldn't measure the value of this waveform using the peak value uh, but this is just really helpful to illustrate what's going on with uh, our waveforms when we add them together which is what we'll do in a moment but notice i can get this right up as high as 10. i can change it the other way but uh, we don't want to do that because that's going to confuse things in fact what i'm going to do is i'm going to change these numbers so i'm going to change it so that i can change this value uh, from zero all the way up to 10 and that's going to change that slider and then I'll do it here as well 0 up to 10 and again down here 0 to 10 and now when you look at the sliders you can see that the bottom end is 0 and the top end is 10 so I can set the value for the waveform anywhere in between there okay so uh, let's bring all those down to nothing like that so we've got uh, 0 amps in every single one of these waveforms at the moment we can imagine it's not even turned on at the moment now the next most important thing that we want to look at here is how we're going to add these values together. So we've seen in previous videos, and if you haven't watched my previous videos on how to calculate neutral currents, they'll come in really handy for you because they're the methods that you'll use in your exams. What we're looking at here is kind of a way of checking that we've got our answers right when we're practicing for those exams. So. You may remember from my other three-phase videos, I have a three-phase playlist, which I suggest you watch uh, to help you to understand what's going on here. But what happens is that in the neutral conductor of a star-connected three-phase system, the uh, three currents from L1, L2, and L3 all combine with each other. And that combination uh, results in a new amount of current. And sometimes the results of that can be a little bit strange, as we've uh, demonstrated in other videos. But we're going to see how we can add them together uh, on this uh, software here. So it's very simple. We just say uh, y is equal to, and then we just add all of those values together that we've calculated up here. So we're going to add together y equals L1 sine of x, and we're just going to put that into brackets like so. And then we're going to add in there, uh, open brackets again, uh, we're going to add in this next one. In fact, what I could do actually, make life nice and easy, I could just copy and paste that into there like that. So there's our L2, and then we're going to add into there our L3 current, which is that one there. So open brackets, paste that in, and close those brackets up again. So now what we've introduced, uh, and I'm just going to change the colour of this so that it pops out a little bit more, 
uh, we'll make this one uh, purple so we can see that nice and clearly. So the purple represents our neutral current. What would be really lovely on here is if I could actually change the colours uh, so that they suited the uh, L1, L2 and L3 uh, colours from our distribution systems, but I can't unfortunately, so we'll just have to go with these rather strange uh, values here. Uh, so what we now find, which is super helpful, is that we can set L1, L2 and L3 to be whatever we want. So let's say you get a question where you're told that L1 is carrying, say, 5 amps. Now I can set that with the slider and it will kind of snap to key values. Uh, if you've got a very specific value, you can actually type it in there, which makes life nice and easy, but we'll leave that at 5. Let's say that L2 uh, is carrying, let's say, 4 amps. And let's say that uh, old steady hands Joe here. I'm try and set that to four. Talk amongst yourselves while I'm doing that. There we go. Let's say that L3 is carrying, uh, let's say, seven amps or something like that. So there we go. So that's carrying seven amps. So notice again, L1, this con this phase here, you can see there it's peaking at five amps. L2, uh, the blue one there, is peaking at four amps. And L3 over here, is peaking all the way up at 7 amps. Now this purple conductor that you can see here is actually peaking at 2.646 amps. That purple waveform represents all of those other three waveforms added together. So what this program is actually doing is at every kind of vertical point on here, it's adding the three values from the three waveforms together, as we've told it to do here, and it's generating a new point on the neutral current waveform. Let me just demonstrate that for you. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a new function here. We're going to keep it nice and simple. This is a bit of a funny one. All I want is a vertical line. So if I just go x equals a, b, add slider a, but then get rid of the b because we don't want the b there. Uh, you can see we've got this new vertical waveform, which I'm going to color black so it stands out. And then if I move this slider along a bit, so I'm going to change the values there from 0 to uh, 360, so I can place it anywhere along the line, and then move it along. So if I pop it uh, somewhere like there, you can see these three points here on our L1, L2 and L3 waveform. If you take the Y values here, 4.494 uh, minus 0.488, and minus 3.316. If you combine all those values together, what you'll find is that you get this value here, 0.69. So the software is doing that calculation at uh, millions and millions of points all the way along here, and then plotting this new neutral waveform here. But the handy thing about it is that where this peaks here, at 2.646, that value there is actually the uh, what we would calculate as being the neutral current. So if you were to go back over some of my uh, previous videos on calculating neutral current and put the values that we found for L1, L2 and L3 in here, you'd find that where this waveform peaks, that is the calculated neutral current. So this has value in two ways. Uh, number one, it kind of helps you to see what's happening when we add waveforms together. And number two, you can use it as a check for making sure that you've got your uh, neutral current calculation correct when you're doing uh, your uh, self-directed study, when you're doing your homework and you're practicing for exams. So I'll put a link into the description below uh, so that you can access this graph, save you all the pain of uh, putting all this information in, perhaps getting it wrong and getting frustrated, uh, and you'll just be able to pop in your L1, L2 and L3 values there, and then you'll be able to find where the neutral waveform peaks uh, click on it and be able to find that. The colours on the waveforms might be a little bit different, uh, but you should be able to figure out uh, which waveform is which uh, by that. So you can see it's quite interesting because you can play around and change the uh, values of the different currents and you can see how that affects the neutral current. Uh, and of course, as we've seen in lots of my previous videos, if we set all of these values to be the same, so we've got 5 amps in each of the conductors, What's going to happen to that neutral current? Can you remember? And again, this is this is just so lovely. The fact you can see this at this point. So if I can get that about there, uh, you'll see. Again, let's look at that value on there. We've got uh, seven uh, minus two point five on both of those. So that's seven 
uh, minus 2.5 and then minus 2.5 again gets us down to 2 and you'll see that the neutral waveform is peaking at 2 and then if I just uh, dial back L3 so that we've got 5 amps in there all together watch what happens to our neutral current it just disappears completely and we end up with no current in the neutral at all and that's what we mean by a balanced three-phase load where these three currents meet in the neutral they cancel each other out and no current flows in the neutral at all which is pretty beautiful i think uh, and this is quite a good way that you can actually see that happening so uh, click on the link in the description below have a play around with the graph don't worry about breaking anything you won't be able to uh, and i hope that you can use this to check your answers when you're doing your self-directed study or uh, your distance learning or whatever's going on at the moment and uh, as always uh, all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching